My name's Anne and I'm the harpist with the Hermes Experiment. In this video I'm going to show you around the harp as an instrument and also give you some ideas and tips on how to write music for the instrument. This video is designed to go alongside my Writing for the Harp handout, which you can find on our website, thehermesexperiment.com. Everything I talk about in this video, including how to notate the things that you're going to see, is included on that handout, so please do go and find yourself a copy so that you can follow that through. There are two main types of harp in Western culture. This one here, which is the pedal or concert harp, and then this one here, which is the folk or lever harp. The folk or lever harp has a slightly thinner sound, and as you can see, it's a lot smaller. The pedal or concert harp has a wider range of notes and is a slightly bigger and fuller sound. you're going to be writing for the concert or pedal harp. The harp has a huge range of notes. It's just a little bit smaller than that you would find on a piano. You can see the range of the notes written out on the handout. I'm going to play all the way from my lowest string all the way to the top so that you can hear. there are seven pedals that I move with my feet. There's one pedal for each note of the scale. D, C, B, E, F, G and A. And you'll also notice that there are three slots for each pedal. So if I move this one, the B pedal, into the top slot, that is called the flat position. And if I play all of the B strings on the harp, you'll hear that they're all B flats. into the middle slot, that's the natural position, all of the B strings, the same ones I've just played, would have gone up a semitone to become B naturals. And similarly, if I move the pedal, the B pedal down into the sharp position, the lowest possible position, those same strings will have gone up yet another semitone to be B sharps. panic. At this stage it's just really good for you to know and be aware of how the harp works but don't let it worry you or put you off writing your piece for the instrument. We're very good at changing pedals and it shouldn't get in the way of your music. Have a look at this excerpt from a piece written for our ensemble by the composer Giles Swain. I have to move so many pedals and this is at the limit of what's possible but it shows you that we really can get through a huge range of chromatic notes. It's not compulsory for you to use traditional musical notation. However, if you are using this form of writing down your music, harp music looks exactly like piano music. So I have some notes written in the bass clef for my left hand to play and some notes written in the treble clef for my right hand to play. And you can see on the handout an example of what this looks like. This is what that music on the handout sounds like on the harp. Just 
like with other instruments, don't forget to tell me how you'd like me to play the notes, in addition to which notes to play. The name for this is articulation, and all it means is different ways of playing the same notes. One of the easiest ways to show off different types of articulation on the harp is by using chords. One of the types of articulation you might use is very short, or staccato, indicated by a small dot beside the notes or chords that you've written. Or the opposite, long notes or legato notes. Another really useful articulation is accented notes and you use a little sideways V sign above or below your note to show that you want the note to have a particular emphasis. One of the types of articulation that's a little bit more special to the harp is the fact that we often spread chords and that just means that we don't play all of the notes at the same time, we break them up. So instead of, we might play, all you need to do to show us that you want to do that is to write a wiggly line down the side of the chord. We'll assume that you want us to play the chord from the bottom upwards. But if you'd like it to go the other way, simply indicate that with a squiggly line with an arrow pointing downwards. You could even let us know whether you'd like the chords to be spread very quickly or very slowly. with chords on the harp. There are a few things to avoid when writing for the harp. The first thing to bear in mind is that harpists only use four fingers in each hand to play. On the piano you might use all five at a time and so you can write ten note chords, five notes in one hand and five notes in the other. On the harp try to remember that you can only ever use eight notes in your chords. This is simply because with the harp hand position, our little fingers actually just don't quite reach the strings. That's why we can only use four fingers in each hand at a time. The next thing to remember is that it's very hard to see both ends of the harp at the same time. So try not to write music where one hand is playing really, really, really sky high and then one hand is playing really, really low because it's really, really tricky. For the same reason, try and avoid writing things that jump really quickly between the opposite ends of the harp, purely because it's really hard to prepare and check where you're going. Whoops. That's about as fast as I can do that. So try and avoid too much jumping around. Now, um, the final thing to think about is to avoid playing really, really low with both hands. Of course, you, you're very welcome to write lots of low notes in the left hand, but can you see my right hand can only reach so far? So try to avoid writing loads of notes really, really low. If it can all be played with the left hand, that's absolutely fine. Now I'd like to show you some textures that work really well on the harp. The first of these we've already talked quite a lot about, which is chords. So just like a guitar might strum chords to accompany a song, the harp can do just that as well. Listen to this excerpt from a piece written for our ensemble by Misha Molov Abado. It's an arrangement of a traditional folk song called The Linden Tree. And this is a little bit from the harp part towards the end where we've got some beautiful, luscious chords to accompany the singer.
on the harp is repetitive accompanimental patterns. So you can turn your chords into really lovely repetitive patterns that can really bring the texture to life and give it a little bit more rhythm. So for example, you might take a simple triad progression, C major, F major, and G major, and turn it into a rhythmical ostinato pattern. on the harp as well. This is another texture that can work really really well especially as part of an ensemble so the harp might be able to play a melody on its own. And you can double that with the notes an octave lower or higher as well to create a little bit more um, depth to the sound. Don't forget as well that the harp has the most wonderful bass resonance. Don't be afraid to use it essentially a bit like a bass guitar. It's got the most wonderful depth of sound. As well as those core textures, the harp can also create some really special sounds that we sometimes call extended techniques. The first of these that I'd like to show you is harmonics. These are created by playing the string whilst touching it at a very specific point and you get a really magical sort of half note. There is an example of this on the handout and I'm going to play the example that's actually there on the handout. special effect I'd like to mention is the glissando and this just involves dragging the fingers up or down the strings to create a whooshing effect and you'll probably have heard this in film scores. Or very quietly or we can play them with our nails. that's a very different type of sound. How to notate that's noted on the handout. You can pick any chord or scale for your glissandos, just make a note on your music of which chord or you can even write out the uh, letter names of the notes that you'd like included. The next special technique I'd like to mention is percussive sounds. Just like on the other instruments, the harpist can drum on the body of the harp with different parts of the hand to create different sounds. section at your disposal. Simply write out the rhythm that you'd like and just make it clear that it's a rhythm part, a percussive part rather than a pitched part. Next we've got pedal slides and this is where the harpist can slide between notes by moving the relative pedal that you saw earlier uh, while the string is still vibrating. So again I'll play the example that's on your handout. to that the harpist can also create something called a pedal buzz and all we do is we hold the pedal between notches and that creates a clashy sound because of the mechanism of the harp so instead of a normal note we get this and that can be a really dramatic effect to use in your piece and finally we've got air sounds or scraping sounds 
and these are created on the wire strings at the bottom of the harp. If I rub my palm on these strings, we get a whispery air noise. And if I drag my nail, or I could use a card or something like that, up one of these strings, we get a really, really scratchy sound. It's very whistly and uh, almost like the wind coming through a, a half-closed door or something. So that's a really effective uh, sound that you can use if you'd like to, to create some atmosphere in your piece. I hope this video has given you an insight into what's possible on the harp and also some inspiration for the sounds and music you might like to write for this instrument. Good luck with writing your pieces. We really can't wait to play them.